till we meet again. This is indisputable. I'm Sharon Reed and for Dr. Rashad Ritchie and joining us is one of the greatest minds. It's not just political mind, just one of the greatest minds of today, perhaps all time. One of our favorites, the mayor of Enfield, North Carolina, Mayor Mondale Robinson joins us. And I like the festive outfit. Is that a hoodie, Mayor? Or is it, it layered? It's a nice styling. Thank you so much. Yeah, it's, I'm in the mood. Yes, it suits you. This is a get your own style. I like it. Um, I think we should jump right into it, Mayor. I want to hear what you have to say about this first story because it seems like the press release was ready. And the minute the verdict was in, boop, they sent it out. Jonathan Majors is out. Marvel drops Majors after that verdict. We brought it to you right here on Indisputable. Jonathan Majors is out at Marvel Studios in a stunning career blow for the actor. Yesterday, a Manhattan jury found Majors guilty of reckless assault in the third degree and guilty of harassment. That was following a two week trial that stemmed from a March incident between the actor and his ex partner, Grace Jabari. However, the jury acquitted Majors of two other counts of assault and aggravated harassment. Now, before the March arrest, Majors was positioned as the key figure. In the Marvel Cinematic Universe, with the Disney owned studio building its entire current story arc around Majors Kang the Conqueror. Time traveling villain factored into this year's Ant Man and the Wasp, Quantum Mania, as well as both seasons of Loki. He was going to lead Avengers. I mean, just listen and just look at what he was a part of, okay? He was going to lead. Avengers, the Kang Dynasty, that was slated for May 1, 2026. The feature is still in the script phase, not yet begun filming. Would that have saved them if they already had stuff in the can? Don't know because Marvel has two courses it can take now, could recast the part. Although it's not clear how many actors would be attracted to a role from which one actor was so publicly fired. The other course is to redevelop its plans and refocus on a brand new villain. While Marvel sources are mum, there is indication that the studio has already been doing just that. In November, Marvel hired Loki creator Michael Waldron to work on a new draft of what was once called Kang Dynasty, but is now being referred to as Avengers 5. That's according to sources, the Hollywood Reporter with the details. Marvel has recast in the past, but over creative and financial disputes, not for legal troubles. And there you see it. Majors was once considered one of the top rising actors in Hollywood. In addition to Quantum Mania, he starred in Creed 3. That was this year, 2023. He first rose to prominence with The Last Black Man in San Francisco and went on to star in Devotion, Lovecraft Country, The Harder They Fall, and Five Bloods. Bodybuilding drama magazine Dreams bowed at Sundance in January 2023, though its fate remains in limbo as distributor Searchlight removed it from the calendar amid the actor's legal troubles. PR firm, the lead company, and his managers at Entertainment 360 dropped the actor. He is still rep by WME, William Morris Endeavor. That could change, though. In light of the verdict, Majors was arrested March 25th after he called 911 saying he found his ex partner, Grace Jabari, in their New York apartment unconscious. Police said they found injuries on Jabari, including a bruised and fractured finger and a cut behind an ear. Majors pleaded not guilty to all charges. Megan Good held on to Jonathan Majors' hand outside of a New York City courthouse Monday after he was found guilty of harassment and assault. Good has been supportive of her boyfriend in the months leading up to his trial, even going as far as appearing at his June court appearance. The two were first romantically linked in May before they were spotted out together on numerous PDA filled dates in New York City. Good has not publicly addressed her boyfriend's trial or verdict. I can't wait to hear what you have to say about this one, Mayor. There's so many layers to this. We broke the news to the indisputable audience. And now the fallout, more of it. Majors could face up to a year behind bars, but we'll see what happens there. He clearly wanted to save this incredible budding career, a successful career 
already. I raised the question to Senator Turner, who was the guest host on the show as the news broke. About fairness, I don't know what happened, Mayor. I wasn't there. None of us do. A verdict has been given. People who sat through the evidence, I don't know the makeup of that verdict. Uh, There are stereotypes about black men. There are men who just do bad things. There are women who do bad things. There's just so many things I, I don't want to weigh in on. But when I think of Alec Baldwin and Johnny Depp and others in Hollywood, who have still full careers and a team behind them. I don't know, Charlie Sheen's team dropped him when he was talking about tiger blood. Uh, But you tell me, where should this discussion center? Yeah, I mean, we it is improper to have this conversation, I believe, without all of those historical problems and also context that's necessary to understand what it means to be black man in this world. Uh, with that said, we 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 like you said, we do see that a guilty verdict has been rendered. Um, I'm certain they're gonna appeal that verdict. Uh what I do, what I what I find interesting, and like you said, I was not there, I didn't sit through the uh evidence. Uh it's I do see that his it seemed like his attorney made a horrible mistake uh asking questions that led them to use something that happened in their past, which kind of helped paint a light of him being this abusive person. Uh, I, I'm, I'm baffled by what I found, what I thought was powerful evidence when I said the only eyewitness other than them two, the driver saying that the woman was the attacker and this guy was trying to get away and he got out the truck and ran. And then they also released video of him running for six block like Forrest Gump. I thought for sure that that was going to be a benefit to him. But I think, you know, I'm I'm confused by the entirety of the situation. It is absolutely funny beyond what happened in the court case uh, is funny and also sad and also America at its best at how fast his career ended. Um, It reminded me so much of another young black male star who was about to be probably the uh, about to be responsible for the most Oscar receiving movie ever. We're talking about uh, when when um, uh, Birth of a Nation was redone by Nat Turner uh, about Nat Turner. We watch what happened in that with Parker in that situation. And I think people people forget that, you know, the, the course is not always the same or, or even or level as when it comes to black men. And I think we have to definitely, definitely wait and see what else there is to come for this situation. It is definitely a sad and tragic end to what was a budding career for sure. Yeah. Abuse is serious. I don't have all the facts. I'm glad you filled in some, though, that were pre- presented as evidence in the court case, the driver. The footage, the extracurricular that didn't seem attached to this particular incident that suddenly was relevant. Um, others weighing in anonymously on social media who said they had dealings with this black star that were unsavory for them. I don't want to discount anyone's story, but I, I believe context is everything, Mayor. And in this case, too, I also don't respect. And I understand this may be the world we live in, which is different rules for each of us. I don't respect people who only want to see you in the good times. And I'm talking about the agents, the managers, the PR. What's a PR firm for, by the way? That's what I'm talking about. And as a client or talent, I wouldn't, that's a red flag for me. Just, I'm just keeping it real. Okay. That's a red flag for me um, because perhaps. He's going through something. It didn't work out in his favor. And like I said, they had already made up their mind to the movie studio. But when you are willing to just remember when they cut ties with him, okay? That was before guilty verdict, two out of the four counts. Let's remember they acquitted him on two. So I don't know how you feel about that aspect of it, Mayor. I hope that Jonathan Majors, if he needs help, will get it. If he can recover, he will. He's supremely talented, a very talented man and a strong groundbreaking talent in the roles that emerged for him. But I don't know how you feel about how quickly some abandoned ship went. Again, I don't wish Charlie Sheen or any of these other people ill will, but I'm just saying that they did some incredible things that were acknowledged and irrefutable and they're still going. Their bad boy images are celebrated. 
Yeah, and I mean, we 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 know that um, you know you can't be a black man with a bad boy image or or even perceived to be. So here's 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 a couple things uh, that are that are startling to me. Uh, for me, what I see is an exploitive relationship between the studios and also the agencies, saying that as long as you are hot, we are there. Which means we don't we don't really do anything for you, because. He was already a talent. He was the talent that got him all of these roles and presented him. And then as soon as it may have required work from the agency uh, to find him roles, they weren't willing to do that. So I hope other actors are paying attention at how fast uh, they will dismiss you and, and then act accordingly because it just speaks to the support of, I mean, I'm sorry, exploit of nature of not just Hollywood, but all of these industries. We see the same mm -hmm. thing with athletes as well. So, um, you know, like you said, uh, this is a he's an already wealthy man and we we don't we're not crying for him uh because it, it, it is clear that he uh he had a role to play in the situation what we are saying though that we we will be uh it would be we would be remiss if we didn't mention the racial uh tones to this case yeah eloquent eloquently you put it there mayor and i i agree wholeheartedly um, but we'll see what happens with Jonathan majors we'll be following it and hope to talk to him even i'd love to sit with him and and get a more well-rounded um, view from him. Money talks, and uh, apparently he's not gonna walk on some of the lies he told. But how far will that go? The former Georgia poll worker suing Rudy Giuliani again. Boy, he has something else in common with Donald Trump. You just can't keep your mouth shut, can you? Per CNN, former GA election workers Ruby Freeman and her daughter Shea Moss, who won a nearly $150 million verdict against Rudy Giuliani for defamation on Friday. We're talking days ago. Have sued him again, asking a federal judge to permanently prohibit Rudy Giuliani from lying about them. Keep my name out of your mouth. I don't know another way to put it. Now we've got to make it, how do you say, keep my name out your mouth in legal terms? The judge is gonna have to issue an order to get him to stop. Maybe he should just stop talking, I don't know, because he's still at it. Recently filed lawsuit comes as Giuliani has continued to make false statements about their work as absentee ballot counters in the 2020 election. They were just doing a service to us all. New lawsuit says, quote, defendant Giuliani continues to spread the very same lies for which he has already been held liable. Defendant Giuliani's statements coupled with his refusal to agree to refrain from continuing to make such statements, make clear that he intends to persist in his campaign of targeted defamation and harassment. It must Stop, directly quoted from the newly filed court case. We're not talking about the $150 million verdict. It's a new one, it's a new one. He used to be a prosecutor, he's disbarred, right? Okay, new lawsuit represents the latest round of fallout facing the former New York mayor of his legal work for Donald Trump after the 2020 election. Can we call it legal work? It comes as Giuliani continues to be buried in debt and legal proceedings. He is also headed to trial for criminal charges back in Georgia, where he's pleaded not guilty related to his 2020 election work for Trump. Again, CNN with the details. Moss and Freeman's lawyers added that even since the verdict, Giuliani has indicated he wouldn't stop repeating the false claims about them. At the end of the first day of last week's defamation trial, Giuliani told television cameras outside court, that quote, everything I said about them is true. And that he had proof that the media should quote, stay tuned. Giuliani presented little defense in the case and didn't testify. Well, let's stop there because didn't he acknowledge? This is just about how much it was worth. And in his view, these were just two black ladies, not really worth much. Two black ladies in Georgia, who cares? Throw them a couple coins and be done with it. Well, a Georgia jury said, no, those coins are going to add up to a slow count of $148 million because they are worth something, right? So he actually, through his lawyers, 
went ahead and basically stipulated, I lied. I don't think I should be blamed for everything that came their way, including the death threats, but I did lie. Now he's saying he didn't lie. Which one is he lying about? The first lie or the second lie? Moss and Freeman pointed out that Giuliani also told the media after the jury's verdict Friday, he had no doubt his comments were supportable. And that he continued to repeat himself on a podcast hosted by far right figure Steve Bannon on Saturday. Supportable is different than truthful. A lot in the MAGA world did support these ignorant lies. They did made these two women, their lives a living hell. Very serious, they'll never get their names back even now. Their new lawsuit seeks a permanent injunction from the federal court in Washington to be placed on Giuliani that would prohibit him from making or publishing or causing to be made or published further statements repeating any and all false claims that the mother and daughter during the 2020 election ballot counting engaged in election fraud, illegal activity or misconduct of any kind. Again, that's according to the filing. Giuliani's assets, what does he have? Besides a bottle of open hair dye, okay, it's Mm. dried up. And you can, a lot of times you gotta throw away the extra portion. I know, okay, you can't hold on to that. We know he has a dried up open bottle of hair coloring. Where's the money? While Giuliani has repeatedly claimed he's broke, Moss and Freeman's legal team is already carving out ways to collect what they're owed. Lawyers for the women have identified substantial assets Giuliani has in New York and Florida, including bank accounts, a condo in South Florida, and a New York City co-op, according to another court filing following the jury verdict. During the last week of the trial, Giuliani acknowledged he had reached an agreement to host a show on a streaming channel affiliated with the right wing network Newsmax, which could contribute to his income in addition to earnings from podcasting and other appearances. Moss and Freeman's team told the court Monday, they're already concerned Giuliani may try to shield some of his wealth. So they want to try to claim some of his assets as soon as this week. They struggled for months to gain a full picture of Giuliani's financial state with some of their only insight coming from a years old tax return of Giuliani's that has not been made public. He has reportedly even refused to cooperate with subpoenas to determine his net worth. Additionally, court action on Monday notes Giuliani still hasn't paid Moss and Freeman for reimbursements they won earlier for their attorney's fees. Law firm that has represented Giuliani in other proceedings is suing him for almost 1.5. Four million of unpaid legal bills as well. It's a race, folks, to get the pennies he has. Okay. It's a race to wherever the money is, whoever gets there first. That's what we're dealing with now. Somebody who lacks integrity. That's on top of the other debts Giuliani has disclosed publicly, such as tens of thousands of dollars in unpaid phone bills. Who was he talking to? Colluding with. Litigation costs, some of which Trump has helped him with, make that Trump supporters, hack, whatever, because he doesn't share with anybody. Mayor, I want the judge to issue this order. These women have been through enough. I also think it's the American way for them to get every penny. If they have to rip the toupee off, I don't know if it's a toupee. And I don't have anything against lace front. Not a thing. But they should get everything of value because he chose to give it up. But I don't know what a judge ordering him not to lie is gonna do when he doesn't follow the rules. This former prosecutor doesn't follow the law, doesn't answer subpoenas, isn't truthful outside the courtroom, then inside the courtroom. What's it really gonna do? What's the cost? What's the penalty here, mayor? They're not gonna put him in jail for civil things. Maybe they could. Yeah, I think, you know what I think, listen, it, this this case, Rudy Giuliani, as of late, has shone a light or shown a light on who he really is. And I think we should take a step back. And this is also why I tell people, be careful when you worship people and personalities. Um, this mm-hmm. is the mind, allegedly, that gave us, that showed us how to use Rico to go after the mobs, right? This is, a, this is the legal mind that supposedly created that, 
showed us how you can use that uh, in courts, which means it probably was some other attorneys in the office, but because he was the DA, he got credit for it. Because yep. what we're seeing is there's nothing legal genius about this man. Nah. There's no way you could be sentenced or, or, or made to pay, found liable for $148 million, and you walk outside and say the same thing yeah. again. Again, at on the courthouse steps in front of a camera with the microphone on. You have to be loony to do such thing. And speaking of loony, you know, times, time, I know time has to feel a little crazy. They named this man man of the year before. Mm -hmm. This man was man of the year. He was on the cover of Times when in actuality, the only reason Rudy Giuliani should be named man of the year is if it's to talk about how ridiculous he is as a person. Yeah. Um, I, we are finding ourselves, we know he can't have a $148 million stash. He does yeah. have a $6 million apartment in New York he's trying to sell. I think this $148 million, which is a hundred million more than these two women were asking, is to say to all of these people who will threaten democracy with lies, who will mm -hmm. challenge election integrity, that you better be you better be careful because we will come after you. So this is more than a, a, a sentence and a punitive to uh -huh. Giuliani. It was a, a message to all of y'all. This is Remember, this is the second large lawsuit settlement we've seen for people like this. Dominion won one against Fox. That was five or six times larger than this 148 million. And I think what people are trying to say, courts across this country, is you will not play without democracy, even yeah. if even if Donald Trump told you it was okay. Yeah. Apparently, if you hold on long enough and you fight hard enough, you realize that somewhere along the way, the fix is not in. And a Georgia jury said, no, sir, no, sir, okay? You're, we're not doing this today. We're not doing this with you anymore, okay? I just wanna know when his privilege, and maybe it is loony, but I also think it's very privileged. I put him on the cover too, mayor, man of the year, and I put a sub, Hey, America, look at your life. Here go your life, America. Okay, I, I would think about doing that. And then because they like to do it, maybe it was Newsweek. But I might add my own little interpretation. I'd play with the colors, you know, like they like to do when black men are on the cover. I said, I'd make them whatever I want it to be. But this ain't democracy. I want a judge to order him to shut up. Shut your mouth talking about these good women who are worth something. They were worth something before this verdict. And it's disgusting that you thought you could just throw them away. The mayor of Enfield, North Carolina joins us today. And I just love it when he's sitting in the chair and giving all of us insight and commentary. This is indisputable. I'm Sharon Reed in for Dr. Rashad Ritchie. We're right back. I wish a Karen would. You want to call the police on him for having a barbecue on a In Sunday? You're going to feel right. Back off! I'm going to tell there's an African-American man threatening my life. Do you want to keep her going? Hold the gun. Where's your bag? Take my bag. Okay. Yeah, you said my bag. Go. You said my bag. Yeah? Yeah? Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, okay. Mm -hmm. Yeah. We showed you road rage before, right? This Karen threatening an armed driver. Do you need to know more than that? I want to bring you in right now, Mayor, on a, a stupid scale, we'll call it one to five. Where does this one rank? This is the worst for me. I, I, I honestly. For me to see this young lady this angry over something in the car in, in a, on the road, road rage and hopping out of your car and we hear the gun click. We just saw a video f a few months ago where someone was threatening a woman in the car and she shot them. This, this is when privilege becomes dangerous, life threatening, not for the person in the car in this case, but for this person. And she's knocking on the window and I just, this could have been so bad so quick. The restraint of the person in the car with that gun saved that Karen's life. Yeah. There's been cases where people have been run over too. And when you make it to a court of law, if it even goes there, if someone's even charged, that's what the jury would see, a judge would see. Wouldn't you be in fear? I don't know what happened here, but I think, Mayor, your point is we don't really need to know what happened here. Isn't the point to stay alive? 
Well, can anything be that great that this is what we're doing here? I'll give you the last word, Mayor. Yeah, I mean, this this is this is indicative of of this of this this space we find ourselves in America where people have lost their chill. There's no chill in this country anymore. The lines of when you stop or when enough is enough or when you need to be heard has been blurred and people are blaming it on COVID, but I think it's a culmination of everything. We have presidential candidates, ones that are leading the pack of everybody running for president that lies every time they open their mouth. And I think, you know, everybody else is taking and following suit. And I think it's dangerous and deadly. It is dangerous and it can be deadly. And that Karen is lucky to be alive. And I do mean lucky. Wasn't your day apparently. Could be tomorrow. Let that be a lesson. It's a it's enough for me, okay? I didn't even need to see that to know. Somebody cut you off in traffic? Say, you say sorry. If <laughs> they can't, sorry. This is what I do. Even if it's not my fault, it's not important enough to me. I wanna live. I got a kid to take care of. I like me some me. I wanna live. Wow. Um, did you know? That sometimes white people don't get into college because, well, it's our fault. It's the fault of people of color, apparently. That's what we're going with. It's been an ongoing theme for some time, and there's just different examples that pop up of this theme. This theme of how minorities are preventing privileged people from achieving their dreams when they don't get something. It's gotta be someone's fault. Right. Viral social media posts purporting to show video footage of a college applicant being rejected by his apparent top Ivy League choice claimed the decision was made based on race. The video entitled Bro got rejected because he's white was making the rounds on social media nearly six months after the US Supreme Court reversed four decades of precedent, banned colleges and universities from ever considering race or ethnicity and admissions in any way for any reason. Footage features a person wearing a sweatshirt emblazoned with Cornell University's name and apparently sitting in front of a computer screen before presumably opening an email to learn his admissions fate at the school. Whoever made this video wanted everybody to know just how supremely qualified this kid was for Cornell which isn't even the most competitive Ivy League school when it comes to admissions. While it's unclear when the video was filmed, the Supreme Court in June made itself very clear when it struck down affirmative action and ruled that colleges and universities may never use race as a stereotype or negative and at some point they must end the 6-3 opinion along with ideological lines, it did go along. Also dictated that nothing in this opinion should be construed as prohibiting universities from considering an applicant's discussion of how race affected his or her life, be it through discrimination, inspiration, or otherwise. News one. Don't you love these kind of, huh? I know legal scholars who are parsing and trying to understand what the hell you're talking about here. This is from the Supreme Court. These are the highest justices in the land, right? Or is I talking about somebody else? Despite the dissent's assertion to the contrary, universities may not simply establish through application essays or other means. The regime that we hold unlawful today, all of which means, of course, that Cornell could not have rejected the applicant in the video because he's white. However, even if affirmative action was still in place, the student in the video and his alleged 1460 SAT score still fell short of Cornell's academic standards for applicants who typically have an SAT score between 1470 and 1550. Okay, that's according to the college board. Beyond that, the college board also noted that Cornell is extremely selective and accepts just 7% of on average more than 71,000 applications annually. In other words, while students' grades were indeed elite, they simply just weren't elite enough, perhaps, for his top choice of universities. Rejected because he's white. Now, I know we may not know who posted the video or when it was posted, but I sure do, Mayor, know the intent here and the message here. But 
but I'll let you unpack it for our loyal viewers. Listen, so we should also, in the context of this 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 video, it's perfect because if, especially if you spent time to look under the comments before it was deleted, you will see how white people feel in this country. And there's been studies that show that white people believe. Uh, usually Republicans, white Republicans believe that white people are discriminated against more than anybody mm -hmm. else, especially black people. This was a continuation of that feeling. This video trying to play on the people. Here's what's funny, though. They didn't even do enough research to realize what was the minimum standard for SAT scores mm -hmm. to get into Cornell. And everybody that meets minimum standards do not, uh, you still ain't, just because your scores are enough, do not mean you're going to get in. 70,000 people, 71,000 people yep. apply, 4,000 people are accepted. This idea that it's not enough just because you had a so-called on paper enough, the, the laziness that goes into this is the same laziness we see in the, the arguments to defend white supremacy or try to make black people less than. Mm -hmm. I, I, I think here's, here's, here's what's also dastardly in this, um, and, and, and people should definitely pay attention because it is, it is as American as apple pie. There, there, there is an inherent belief that I am supposed to be somewhere because I'm white, regardless of the credentials. And that's what the 1460 not been enough says to me in my soul. It doesn't matter that I did. I had the sweater. Why wouldn't you accept me? I had the sweater and I applied and I'm white. So I'm supposed to be there. Yeah. The idea of rejection is something new for white men in America. The idea that America is something more than a country for white men is at the root of all of this. Diversity is a problem for so many white people because white men feel threatened. The idea that I have a right, a, a white man has a right or an obligation to respect rights of all of our, all the other of us is what's at root at America's white supremacy and why it's on the rise right now and why white people feel threatened. This is how white men can go down to the border and scream at brown people who this country was stolen from and say you are illegal. It is okay. grounded in something that is absolutely loony. Okay. You, sir, came over here and stole this land from people that look just like the people trying to cross the border and you have the audacity to call them illegal. Um, this is all, all, it's all rooted in white fragility, period. About our differing viewpoints, you, sir, don't belong parking your boat here on this dock, sir. I just work here. I've asked you to move, sir. But if your view is that I started with the whole pie, right? God given, entitled, whatever. Then you don't want to give up any of the pie. Whereas the other point of view is I'm just asking for a chance to get some crumbs off this pie. I'll work for it. I'll help make it. Oh, that's right. I already did chef it up. Might have provided all the ingredients and all the labor for the pie. And now I want a piece of what, well, the fruits of my labor, if you will. Okay. What's that pie that has all the different fruits in it, including rhubarb mayor? I love that razzle dazzle something. You know what I'm talking about. It's got berries, strawberries, rhubarb. Anyway, all this talk about pie mayor, I apologize. And you're going to have to bring us back to um, some intelligent conversation, but I do love that pie. Well, I mean, I think it's important to talk about that American is America itself is all of those ingredients that you're talking about in that pie, right? There are there, there are brown fruit, black fruit, and, and, mm -hmm. and many other fruits. And unfortunately, for white men who have for, for, for the past three plus hundred years had to share with no one, regardless of who produced it, they're really feeling a pinch right now. And I don't know why, because if you still look at what's going on in this world, white men are still doing better in this country than anybody. They're least likely to be sentenced for crimes they commit. They, they, and when they are sentenced, they get less time than anybody. They are overpaid more than anybody in this white women, black women, black men, and Latinx folk as well. So I don't understand what they're complaining about, but for the idea that other people shouldn't have as much as they do. You don't want to share anything. And when you don't get one thing, we're used to being disappointed and being resourceful, picking ourselves up. I, that's why don't talk to me about how people of color don't know how to pick themselves up by their bootstraps. That's all we've been doing. That's all we take pride in doing, okay? But you want to block here and block there. I want some pie just like you. So I don't know if this is a real student or fake, but you're right. Look under the hood. Couldn't even bother to do your homework 
and know what the threshold SAT score is, okay? You are outside of that, then maybe you don't belong in Cornell. Apparently you don't, and I'm okay with that. You can go elsewhere, be resourceful, pull yourself up by your bootstraps. This is Indisputable. I'm Sharon Reed in for Dr. Rashad Ritchie, the mayor of Enfield, North Carolina. Mayor Mondale Robinson, who's also so much more. And we should talk about that a little bit too. We're right back. Welcome back to Indisputable. I am Sharon Reed in for Dr. Rashad Ritchie. We have Mayor Mondale Robinson joining us once again. Some of your comments, uh, Karen, let's talk about Karen, TYT member here. K Flux HX. Uh, well, we'll talk about Jonathan Majors first. I think this is what you're getting at. I don't think any employer should fire an employee for actions that take place outside of the work environment, but that belief should apply across the board. We can celebrate a Karen being fired for going viral, but I have no sympathy for any actor who is capable of rendering a woman unconscious. Gave us something to think about. Cornell applicant. The guy in the Cornell video has posted that he never said he wasn't accepted because. He is white, rather some other poster said that. He is upset that the video went viral and wants all copies down. Thank you, Lynn. YouTube now, about the Karen, Manuel. Hashtag respect to Mondell and Sharon for trying to preserve life. (laughs) That's what we're trying to do, okay? Somebody's with a gun and showing it and you're still at their window. You got out of your vehicle. You're banging on the hood of their car. It's just not smart. So yes, I think that you want to recalibrate and rebalance yourself, yes. And think about doing something different, okay? Like, just keep driving, don't engage. See Michael Henson, we all know what the driver of that car was thinking. I wish it Karen would. Thank you for your contribution, see Michael. And thank you all of you, we appreciate the loyalty. Now. Defense medical expert claims ketamine did not kill Elijah McClain. He should still be here. Last week, a medical expert testified for the defense, lawyers of Aurora Fire Department, paramedics Jeremy Cooper and Lieutenant Peter Sichuniak. They're accused of causing 23-year-old Elijah McClain's death. Experts said he doesn't believe the ketamine dose the pair gave McClain contributed to his death, shouldn't got any dose. Cooper and Sichunia were charged with reckless manslaughter, criminally negligent homicide, and three counts each of second degree assault in connection to McLean's death. Why? Look at the picture, why? Two paramedics are being tried to determine if the ketamine injection they gave McLean three years ago ultimately killed him following the struggle with Aurora police that sent him to the hospital. It was the night of August 24th, 2019, Elijah was returning from a convenience store. Bought some iced tea. Suddenly someone called the police about a quote, suspicious person in a ski mask. Three police officers would force McLean to the ground, handcuff and place him in a neck hold that restricted oxygen to his brain, causing him to briefly lose consciousness. He even vomited into his ski mask during the ordeal. Think how scared he was. He went to get some iced tea at a convenience store and suddenly he was being jumped. This is a true definition of the jump out boys. He was being jumped, minding his business. Is that suspicious? And it's cold, by the way, very cold. That's why his face was protected. During the transport to the hospital, the medics decided to administer a 500 milligram dose of ketamine as a sedative used for anesthetizing pain. However, they never asked or consulted McLean about the dose and he ended up going into cardiac arrest. McLean stopped breathing just a few minutes after the injection and three days later, a doctor declared him brain dead. Walking home after getting some iced tea at the store. The testimony details, according to the Denver Gazette, Kenan Hurd, an emergency physician and toxicologist at UC Health pointed to Aurora paramedic protocols that 
indicate the 500 milligrams of ketamine were more than what McLean's body weight called for. That dose would have been more appropriate for someone who weighs roughly 80 pounds more than McLean. Atlanta Blackstar with the details. However, Hurd also said respiratory arrest is a rare and extreme possible side effect of ketamine and concluded McLean's death was accidental. Quote, I would not expect life threatening effects from this amount of ketamine, Hurd told the jury. Hurd never approximated what constitutes a fatal dose. On cross examination, one prosecutor asked Hurd if people can die from expected side effects if they don't receive the proper intervention or treatment. To which Hurd said, yes. Prosecutors argued that Cooper and Sichuniak decided to administer ketamine because they solely relied on the police officer's account of McLean's behavior. Body cam footage revealed that one officer said McLean showed extreme strength, implying he had to be on something. This is that superhuman stuff again. Okay. Aurora paramedics are reportedly trained to administer ketamine to patients suffering from a syndrome called. I mean, is this real? Do we have to keep going to this one? Quote, excited delirium. It's kind of like that catch all. Let's just throw it in there. It's kind of this, this phenomena where we can make it be whatever we need it to be. This condition isn't one that's recognized by the American Medical Association or the American Psychiatric Association. And even the Colorado Licensing Board for Peace Officers voted to remove the term from training documents. Let's get rid of this escape clause is how I interpret that. Okay, it's just too much even for us to try to stand on. Another medical expert testifying on behalf of the defense said that the blame should be on the officers rather than the medics. That forensic pathologist, Lujispa Dragovic, determined McLean died from brain damage caused by inhaling his own vomit. Both Herds and Dragovic's conclusions contradict one doctor who conducted the autopsy for McLean and another who testified for the prosecution. Dr. Stephen Sinna with the coroner's office initially determined McLean's cause and manner of death were both undetermined until he reviewed body cam footage. He amended his previous conclusion and determined that ketamine contributed to McLean's death. Dr. Roger Mitchell determined McLean's cause of death has complications following acute ketamine administration during violent subdual and restraint by law enforcement and emergency response personnel. Source told CNN it's uncommon for paramedics to be held responsible for patient deaths like this. But the coroner's report and the dose of ketamine raised questions about whether Cooper and Sachuniak are criminally liable for negligence or wanton behavior. Three officers who were involved in the struggle with Elijah McLean, left to right here, Randy Rodima, Jason Rosenblatt and Nathan Woodyard did stand trial for McLean's death. Rodima was found guilty of criminally negligent homicide, third degree assault, to be sentenced in January. Rosenblatt and Woodyard were acquitted of all charges. Woodyard is eligible to return to restricted duty with the Aurora PD. Do they want him back? Well, this is a mess, Mayor. And I understand that these Issues have to be adjudicated fully legally. And there's a relationship between prosecutors, paramedics, police, medical examiners. I'd like to stay with how it began, not how it's going. He was going to get an iced tea, returning home, minding his own business. And now he's not here. He shot him up. And now he's not here. You took him to the ground and now he's not here. I'm still waiting to understand what's the crime exactly and why we've had to go through this long winding process for a young man who did nothing wrong except breathe walking down the street with an iced tea. No longer here, Mayor. Yeah, I mean, when we see the, you know, this is, too similar to Trayvon Martin, hoodie, iced tea, dead. Elijah uh, McClain, uh, ski mask, iced tea, dead. I think what we, what we know is the iced tea may not always be present, but the young black man 
we find out real quick why police officers are leading calls for black men between the ages of 18 and 24. It's the leading calls, the number one leading cause of death. And I think, uh, you know, the lack of humanity in all of this is unbelievable. You can't deny the difference between 80 pounds. So th that means both of those paramedics could look at him and see that he was not heavy enough. He was not 80 pounds heavier than he was, and he shouldn't have got 500 milligrams. Also, uh, these it, they should have a duty not to listen to what the police say, but respond to what's going on with the patient in front of them. Regardless of what the police officers tell you, what you see is what you should be trying to deal with. And that, is, that has to be considered into this. And I, and, I, and I understand this legal expert said, this is, what, this is not what killed them. Brain damage is what killed them. Then, you know, in that case, you can always say the stopping of the heart is the reason or the stopping of the brain is mm. the reason people are dead and not the thing that led to it. In law, there's this thing called but for. But for something, he wouldn't have been in uh, a coma, but for something, his heart wouldn't have stopped. And that ketamine, I mean, has to have a role in that, but for a clause. And I also think, you know, we, we, we hear this idea of police officers uh, being tried and then also allowed back. All of those officers that are, that are not, in, there are no innocent officers on the scene of this crime. Mm -hmm. It is impossible to be innocent when what happened to this young man happened to him in presence of these other two officers. And so just because you don't put your hands on someone, the deadly threat is you have been charged with public safety to allow your fellow officer to behave in this manner should disqualify you from not only being a police officer, but anything with government trust, with public trust. It is so disgusting that we have to keep saying that these officers should not be rehired mm -hmm. anywhere, let alone let alone in a police department, especially the one where his family may have to come into contact with you knowing that yeah. you killed their son. You you were part of it by sitting there allowing your partner to do this. Uh, excited delirium, the last thing I'll say is nothing, hmm. nothing more than the same fire that created the first birth of the nation that made black men the, yep. the hunters of peaceful white women and the, the rise of the KKK. So I'm, I'm disgusted with that term. The fact that it's on any legal documents is absolutely disgusting when it's already been de debunked in all medical societies. Yeah. Okay. Did Emmett Till have this too? Who? This is a made up term to criminalize and uh, portray even black boys as the boogeyman. Beware, be afraid, be afraid. And you make an excellent point about paramedics and police. Last I checked, these are separate entities. Why are you colluding? And that's what I call it, collusion. Treat the patient in front of you. That's what you said, Mayor. I couldn't agree more. Was he kicking and screaming and tearing up the inside of the, the unit? Did you have to strap him down? I didn't hear any of that. Only the best people will keep following it. And I pray for this family. The mayor's defending electeds of color, the holiday party. Let's see what's going on in Boston. Boston Mayor Michelle Wu defended a holiday party for elected officials of color after an invitation was accidentally sent to the entire city council, according to NBC News. However, outraged conservatives labeled it as a no white party. Those usually don't have to be labeled, do they? Aren't they? A lot of times, I don't think you have to explicitly do the, anyway. Let's see and dig deeper, shall we? Wu said in an interview, quote, the email invite for an electeds of color holiday party was sent out by a city employee asking for RSVPs and dietary restrictions from council members who plan to attend the event. It's just one of many parties that will be held for Boston elected officials during the holiday season, Wu said. But this one was only intended to go to the six minority council members, NBC Boston, with the details. I think we all have been in, in a position at one point where an email went out and there was a mistake in the recipient. So there was truly just an honest mistake that happened in issuing the invitation. Wu, who is the first woman and person of color elected mayor of Boston, told the media Wednesday ahead of the event. We've had individual conversations with everyone so people understand that it was truly just an honest mistake that went out in typing the email field, she said in an interview. I look forward to celebrating with everyone at the holiday parties we will have beside this one as well. 
It's my intention that we can again be a city that lives our values and creates space for all kinds of communities to come together. Who said in defense of the holiday party? News One with additional reporting. Zach Lindley from News One wrote, so basically white people accidentally found out about a thing that was happening. So they're, they weren't included in, and some of them got predictably upset. Then it became a news story. Then more white people got upset at the quote racism of the first woman of color to be elected mayor in Boston's 200 year history of having mayors. Don't hold your breath waiting on white people to acknowledge the irony though. Here's a thing white conservatives will never understand. Black people and people of color need their own spaces. I want the mayor to unpack that need, we'll get to that in a moment. Lindley continued, again, where are these angry white voices against discrimination? When virtually all white country clubs fail to have a single black name on their membership lists, they seem to understand perfectly that different demographics need their own spaces when men only golf clubs are still operating out in the open in the 21st century. Hell for that matter, where were all these angry post racial whites when Dilbert creator Scott Adams was telling white people to get the hell away from black people? Hint. Many of them agreed and used any instance of perceived anti whiteness they could get their hands on to justify it. Oh, let me look Zach Lindley up on LinkedIn and I'll follow him. Mayor, unpack this. I call it faux outrage. Number one, who wants to really go to a holiday party that's with your stuffy people at work? Nobody really wants to go. But now you're dying to get an invite and you were discriminated against because. You're not brown, isn't this yeah. silly, Mayor? Is it? It's it's beyond silly when we have yeah. we have so many caucus. I mean, the Republican caucus is an all white caucus. Let's stop playing games right now, right? Like, let's be serious. There, there in Congress, there's the Black caucus, there's the Hispanic caucus, there's a there's a Tea Party caucus. We we this is this is this is nothing here. And the fact that they made this news is 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 the power of white supremacy. I gotta say that if this was anybody else talking about a white only, I mean, we celebrate the masters. The name of it, the masters on land that mm. stolen from Geechee people that they thought wasn't going to be able to use. So they gave it to them after slavery ended. And they just allowed their first black person mm -hmm. in my life to join that. Condoleezza Rice was the first black person they allowed to join. Come on. We're not, and they still won't change the name. And they Shouldn't still they won't call it the it. primary. You go into a house, they'll say, this is the primary suite. You're not supposed to say master suite anymore. Yeah, they're still the masters. You know, these people want the master suite. These people want the plantation mentality. These people go on vacation to plantations because mm. it's their mentality. It's those folk who are hearkening back to making America great again when their definition of great mean less rights for people of color. This is not a story that anybody should be wasting ink on. I do appreciate Lindley's um, take wow. on it because it is full. It is full outrage. This idea that something that should be discriminated against. Also, we should note when we have uh, people of elected uh, people of color parties and caucuses do not mean white people can't join. White people often show up to these events. White people are always at CBC. Those that those that are not racist or bothered by the yeah. fact that other people need protected space. Yeah. And I appreciate the Boston mayor, but she her statements seemed to ignore what was really going on and just talk about the mistake that it went out to them by mistake this invitation, okay? But I think I can read between the lines and she's basically saying, you gonna get your fruitcake, okay? It's just so nasty, who wants a fruitcake, okay? My grandmother used to make a good one, but I, it's those little gelatin things, Mayor, what are those? I mean, I have an aversion to fruitcake since I was a child. I can't, I can't partake in this, it really, I just can't do it. Yeah, we we never had fruitcake at holidays, but I used to yeah. always sneak out and get them from the convenience store. I used to like- Oh, you love them. I still do like the cheap, nasty, uh, fruit cakes and also candy corns are my favorite. So I'm that weird guy. Well, you are a league of your own, Mayor, is how I prefer to phrase it. Okay. There are no raisins uh, in my potato salad, though. Well, thank God. Okay. I knew you were a real one and I can live with the rest. Okay. Woo. Mayor of Enfield, North Carolina. He is in a league of his own. You can miss me with the fruit cake, though. I might pop a candy corn. This is indisputable. I'm Sharon Reed, and for Dr. Rashad Ritchie, the mayor and I will be right back. Sharon Reed, in for Dr. Rashad Ritchie, this is indisputable. And the mayor of Enfield, North Carolina, Mayor Mondale Robinson joins us. 
And Mayor, we were chatting about fruitcake. I tend to be in lockstep with you about just about everything of importance. We went our separate ways when it came to this cake with the gelatin in it. But I want to tell you something that, and this is kind of where I thought you were going, but you said you get yours at the convenience store. Now we really can't. <laughs> we're, we're on opposite ends on this one, Mayor. However, TYT member V says, you guys need to have fruitcake made by a Caribbean person. You will never throw it away again. Now, I might be interested in that. If you want to FedEx one my way or the mayor's, maybe we can get them off of that convenience store cake, B. Sounds like you have a secret recipe. And I would like, maybe you'll post it, but if it's a family recipe, you just have to make it for us. So consider that, mayor. As much as you love the other manufactured ones, perhaps this might be more palatable for both of us. You know, let's, let, I, it's probably got less preservatives and, and stuff that's going to kill me, but sure. <laughs> it doesn't sound like King's convinced. He might try your cake, V, but apparently he still wants the other two. Okay, he's going to partake. Go to YouTube now about Elijah McClain and the ongoing court proceedings. The Jack says, and thank you for your contribution. We appreciate it very much. He's wrong. Know what proof is? Elijah's body. They killed that boy. And I do think. Jack, it's that simple. It is that simple. Ivana Trump is gone, but her words are. Trump kept Hitler's speeches by his bed. Now, who would know that? Ivana, that too. For media, and as we covered yesterday, Donald Trump spewed his hateful anti immigration rhetoric in two campaign spots over the weekend. Twice saying immigrants were poisoning the blood of our country. As Mediate notes, a similar version of the phrase appears in Adolf Hitler's manifesto, a book some doubt Trump has even read. Some, I think we all know that he didn't read the book, but he's picking it up perhaps elsewhere, online, Cliff Notes, I don't know. Uh, someone whispering it in his ear. Let's listen country when they do that. We got a lot of work to do. They're poisoning the blood of our country. That's what they've done. They poison mental institutions and prisons all over the world, not just in South America, not just the three or four countries that we think about, but all over the world. They're coming into our country from Africa, from Asia, all over the world. They're pouring into our country. Nobody's even looking at them. They just come in. Uh, the crime is going to be tremendous. The terrorism is going to be, terrorism is going to be. And we built a tremendous piece of the wall. And, and uh, Scotland, how about Scotland? Where else are they coming from? This is disgusting rhetoric. And it's also incomplete. If you're going to go all the way down that rabbit hole of racism, you might as well go all the way. Go all the way. 1990 interview with Vanity Fair, Trump's first ex wife, Ivana Trump, said the future president kept a collection of Hitler's speeches in their bedroom. I told him it's over right at that point. As soon as I discovered that I'm cleaning up and doing maybe snooping, I would have said right then, what are, what are these Hitler? What, what is this Hitler stuff? Don, you're going to get some help or number one, you're in the guest room tonight. That's right off the bat because I'm not going to sleep with anybody who's sitting. Are you researching something? According to the post divorce profile of the couple by Marie Brenner, Ivana pictured above. Well, you saw the picture of her next to the Donald. It was taken in 1988 or close to it with her then husband after she was sworn in as a United States citizen. Oh, yeah. Recounted an instance of a Trump Organization employee greeting his boss. When he visits Donald in his office, Ivana told a friend, he clicks his heels and says, Hail Hitler. Possibly as a family joke. Media, what kind of family is this that we're joking like this? I've heard of inside banter, we're family. But the clicking of the heels, the salute, the wow. Brenner continued with the passage that has come up a lot since Trump entered politics. 
Last April, perhaps in a surge of Czech nationalism, Ivana Trump told her lawyer, Michael Kennedy, that from time to time her husband reads a book of Hitler's collected speeches. My new order, which he keeps in a cabinet by his bed. Kennedy now guards a copy of My New Order in a closet at his office as if it were a grenade. Hitler's speeches from his earliest days up through the phony war of 1939 reveal his extraordinary ability as a master propagandist. Now I get it. Not a secret that Donald Trump does not mind being compared to the Nazi dictator. He also might have thought that he did have a copy. Did your cousin John give you the Hitler speeches, Brenner asked Trump? Trump hesitated, who told you that? I don't remember, Brenner said. Trump continued, actually it was my friend Marty Davis from Paramount who gave me a copy and he's a Jew. Uh, I did give him a book about Hitler, Marty Davis said, but it was my new order, Hitler speeches, not Mein Kemp. I thought he would find it interesting. I am his friend, but I'm not Jewish. <laughs> but is anything the truth? Can can we? Is it? Is anything just the simple truth? He said he's not Jewish, and I don't know, friends, that I'm handing out these copies to. But okay, that's for Marty and Don. Brenner wrote that later in her interview with Trump, he clarified, "If I had these speeches, and I'm not saying that I do. You see what I mean? Can we just keep it simple?" I would never read them. You don't even know if you have the book now. Your wife said it's in your nightstand and your lawyer had a copy. That's what she said. I, you know, I don't know where to begin because there's deliberately no beginning, middle, or end, which a good book perhaps would have, Mayor. He apparently has an affinity for this, but he's not a student, so maybe he's not reading things. Maybe he has someone whispering in his ear, but he is a master propagandist. Can we at least agree on that? Yeah, I mean, listen, I, 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 and I, as dumb as I think Donald Trump is, and he showed the world that he is, I do believe he could, I could see him reading uh, Hitler and, 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 and other people like his mentor who taught him how to be racist, taught him how to discriminate against black people in the seventies. And I think we should be paying attention exactly to who this person is. We have a person who does not mind immigration, but for all over the world, as he described all over the world and conveniently forgot the entire country, I mean, continent of Europe. He Ooh. said Africa, he said Asia, and he said the three countries that we think of. First of all, who's the we that are thinking of these three countries? And what three countries are you talking about? Because when I think about immigration, I don't think about three countries, except for unless we're talking about Europe, because we know up until the 90s, America prevented who could come here. This is why America stayed so white so long. If you think about the China Exclusionary Act, the African nations that were banned to allow anybody to become a citizen up until the 90s. And then if you think about how they prevented our brown brothers from the South from coming in this country just so they could keep America white as it is right now. So this idea that we think of three countries when we think of immigration, especially illegal immigration, I'm not included in the we he's talking about. So this is another dog whistle that people should make sure they're paying attention to. They're coming from Africa, basically saying that people from Europe can't pose in the blood. And we know he believes this because of his kids, four of them are born to European immigrants. All of them mm. had to come here, all of them. And one of them, the one he's married to now, is on a superstar visa. And I have a definition of superstar, and she ain't jumping to mind when I think of it in no context. In no wow. context. That's how I feel about that. <laughs> yeah. And lastly, people need to be sure to know that his mother, his mother, would, he wouldn't be existing but for an immigrant. His mother is a Scottish immigrant that came to this country not long before he was born. So this idea that Donald Trump don't like immigrants, we should be clear to note that he's talking about black and brown people because this... This is white folk America, not ours. Mm. I love Professor Henry Louis Gates. Maybe you need a companion show, Mayor. It would be, be a nice companion. And they could, you know, two hour block on public television, perhaps. Maybe you do it right here because um, that's important context. I think if you had a red hat on, you might be able to think the way the crowd responded in that way. I, I'm not sure. I'm not sure. But I think you have to be, have, Certain red cap on, and then you're thinking of, well, you're thinking that way. Uh, it's puzzling. But a question what in the red state hell? You can take a gun, shoot somebody in the face. It's not hard. 
And sometimes it might even be fun if they're a godless commie. Now, what they're trying to do is sneak the COVID vaccine in your salads. I never had, I hate math. Somebody say amen. Tell me about the shirt you're wearing. I pretty much speaks for itself. Is that something you would really like to see happen? Absolutely. Even with that crucifix dangling over it, what would Jesus think of that? Absolutely. He's, been a, he's not just a traitor now. He's been a traitor for decades. Everybody knows it. But, but again, you have Jesus hanging over, hang for tr- Biden. Would Jesus be cool with it? What's the penalty for treason? Death. Tell, um, tell me this then. Put him in prison for the rest of his life. Sometimes people don't want to answer the question. She answered the question her way. <laughs> Sometimes as a journalist, I just walk away from you and say, I'm not interested. I don't trust the media, apparently. Just wanted to answer the question. TYT contributor Michael Schur was deployed for field reporting last Wednesday, December 13th, to attend Team Trump Iowa commit to caucus event in Coralville, Iowa. And this Trump bet was among the event's standout attendees. How could you miss her? How could you miss her? Apparently, she claimed Obama is still running the show. Uh, So what is it about Donald Trump forgetting Joe Biden for a moment that you like so much? What did he do for this country? What did he do for the entire world? World peace, lower gas prices, taxes, everything. Everything was phenomenal under Donald Trump. Everything was. Everything was. Everything. Absolutely everything was. And now it's (laughs) Do you blame President Biden for the for the wars that are going on? Absolutely. And the Democrats and Obama. I'm, 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 Obama calling the shots right now. It ain't Biden. Biden's. So it's Obama calling the shots? I believe so. What Is did it? he say at the end of his second term or after his second term? He said if he could have a third term and have a bug in someone's ear and run it from his basement, that's, that would be good enough for him. And I believe that's what he's doing. Because I hadn't heard that Obama's running the White House before. Is there sort of support for that that you've heard? Biden's not doing it. But is there support for that that you've heard? He's incompetent. Biden is incompetent. I mean, he shits himself and when he goes to see the Pope and everywhere else, and he has no idea where he's at most of the time or what he's doing. I'm a bit confused too now, having heard that. Uh, disclaimer spray tans are not harmful, folks. I don't think you're supposed to inhale. You know, they're quick, you let it dry, get dressed, and it lasts. Believe it or not, I've gotten them before. Yes, me, going on vacation, I wanted to look slimmer. They're not harmful, so we have to deduce that this is how it started and how it's going. And she kept going with the hanging sentiments. None of this would be happening if they hadn't stolen the 2020 election from Trump and we the people. That's a fact. They stole the 2020 election and none of these wars would be going on. There would still be world peace had they not stolen the election from us and Donald Trump in 2020. Even though it was Putin who went into Ukraine and it was Hamas that went into He would have never done that if Trump was in office like he should be. Stolen election. What's the evidence of that that you're pointing to? mountains of evidence. Are you serious right now? There's mountains of evidence. In some states, Biden or Trump was way ahead, and then the, within seconds in front of your eyes, all of a sudden, Biden's ahead, and Donald Trump is behind. Not just be counting votes, mail-in ballots. No, Remember, that was no. the, the pandemic election. Right. The pandemic, you mean? <laughs> what do you mean? It was released intentionally. That's what I mean. They did it what? on purpose, so they could use ballot stuffing and... Oh, so COVID, they released COVID so they could stuff the ballots? Yes, absolutely. It was a pandemic. Everyone knows that. It wasn't just a fluke, a bat got out of... It was planned. It was planned. Don't. Everyone responsible for it should be at the end of a noose or in prison the rest of their life, right along with Fauci and everyone else that was involved. It's the eyes for me. And I want to tell Michael, I hope you don't look her in the eyes because I don't know what the end result could be. It's the eyes for me. WWJD, what would Jesus do? Remember people wear those bracelets? I didn't see that she had one on, but she does have the cross there. Apparently, Jesus is whispering in her ear and saying, dictator, well, if it's Donald Trump, I don't care. 
If you could have an option of four years of Donald Trump as a dictator or four years of Joe Biden as a president, what would you choose? Donald Trump. Even as a dictator? He wouldn't be a dictator. No, no, but I'm in, in this I'd silly hypothesis. Donald Trump. Yeah. I'd still okay. say Donald Trump. Yeah. Okay. Absolutely. Right. No, you know who the dictator is right now? Biden. <laughs> Biden. And look at the <laughs> shit that they're doing to Trump in court. I Wait, think- I- they have no grounds for any of the stuff that they're taking him to court for. It's all bullshit to keep him from being able to run in 2024 for president. They're trying to give Donald Trump the death penalty for some bullshit charges. I haven't heard the death penalty to Donald Trump, actually. I've only heard that possible prison time, some, some of them just fines. For what? For what? Uh, well, I mean, they're, they're, they're violations of laws in Florida and in Georgia and okay, federal. So why didn't they bring these charges up, up against him when they happened, if, if they're so bad? And uh, you know, I'm not, I'm not in the Justice Department. I don't know. Because they're scared to death of him, and they're trying to keep him from being able to, to run for president because they know they're going to lose. They're scared of him, and they should be. That last part might be true. Okay. And I do want to know what took them so long because we all saw it. I am concerned about the eyes though, Mayor. I'm going to keep putting that up there, okay? I even looked down a little bit, tried to look out of the corner of my eye as she was talking because I didn't want to look head on. I feel like there's power in those eyes and not the good kind, Mayor. What would Jesus do? Because the cross, the calling for the execution of Joe Biden and really believing it, do you have no doubt that this trumpet, Ray Tan and all, believes it? Do you, Mayor? Absolutely not. She's such a fan of Trump. She get the same color tan as him. Ah, Donald Trump, the same She's place. bright orange. Listen, here's, here's, here's the thing. We cannot write this. Not these people. We have to write them off. There's no fixing. All of these things that this woman, she has on a shirt. How rich is this? She has on a shirt talking about Joe Biden is, a, has, is treasonous while Trump is facing those exact charges. She wants to hang Joe Biden for what Trump's guilty for. And you can't, you can't change that. Here's, I'm, I'm so afraid that people on our side of the aisle, I'm, I'm a leftist. People on my side of the aisle don't uh, know how serious where we find ourselves. Trump may be elected president again if we continue on the path we're going on because we're not talking about the true threat. And that true threat is... These people don't care. She is willing to have Donald Trump as a dictator, which is actually treasonous because you have to get rid of the Constitution, whatever. That's too much thinking. Anyway, these people are willing to go anywhere for Trump, including the ballot box. And people on our side are not excited about their options right now. I am so afraid. And she's right. We should be afraid of Trump. She did lie about one thing. She said no bats got out. She is the bat that got out because she's bat crazy. I mean that. Do you think she sleeps upside down? Absolutely. She may. Absolutely. She may. I am uh, stunned, but there are others. There's more like her. Okay. And if you encounter one, do so with caution. Caution. Because these people are, well, may or might be right. They're gone. They're already gone. We've got to save those who come next. We have an opportunity, babies. Children, okay, we have an opportunity. Uh, Mayor, tell the good people where they can find your great work. And you do more than just, look, being the mayor of Enfield, North Carolina, it's a beautiful place. But it fully occupies your time, but you still manage to do so much more. Yeah, I mean, you know, it's election season. So Mondale Robinson is mostly known for Black Male Voter Project and the work we do around Black men. So you could definitely follow us at Black Male Voter Project. But also you can find me on uh, contributing over on Rebel HQ and everywhere on social media at Mondale Robinson. I'm right here sitting in the chair. We love it. We love watching you. You have many fans. Do try to expand your horizon on one thing if you could, Mayor, because I think you're perfect. But there's just one thing, that damn fruitcake. I'm sorry. And I think you're better than that. I don't believe your sister's eating it. Your mom's not eating it. They're not. That's right. You're better than that. You were raised different. Uh, But we're going to love you through it. And maybe you want to try the Caribbean version, okay? And see if we can kind of just bring you along gradually. Mm -hmm. Mayor Mondale Robinson, we adore you. Thank you for everything you bring um, to the culture, to the people, all of it. We appreciate you. 
This is Indisputable. I'm Sharon Reed. Appreciate always sitting in the chair for Doc. We hope you'll join us again.